Hi, I'm Rebecca from Collective Rise Studios, and I'm going to show you all how to make a drilled through basket. This is a very basic one. It's done in a continuous weave. So all of these rows are basically done with maybe two pieces. You just kind of add in when you run out, and I'll show you how to do that. We'll start it out with a foot, and we'll top it off with a braid. So we'll get started. I'll show you the kit. This is what it's going to look like when you get a kit. It's going to have a base and all your materials. It's got the pattern written out. There's a picture on the back of the pattern. And then it's got your cutters and your measuring tape. And I'm going to snitch those out of there and use them myself. So I have gone ahead and soaked a set of spokes. Um, we're dealing with rattan. You'll hear it called reed instead of rattan. Um, it's a plant member of the palm family. There's, this is called round reed. And this is going to form your spokes. In your kit, you're going to have long pieces, so you measure them out and cut them yourself. They're all going to be about 22 inches long. This is what I've got soaking already in the warm water bath. This is flat reed, and it's going to be used to build your wall. Um, I better get some of that wet, too. I'm going to just snitch that and let it soak. We should have the spokes about ready. I've got a base over here. You can decide which side you like the best and make that the top because you're going to see the top or the bottom of it. Actually, when you look inside of it, you get to pick which side you want to look at. I'm going to pick the lighter side. When you uh, soak rattan, it's ready to use when you can twist it around your finger and it doesn't crack. So that wraps pretty good. It's no cracking. It's about ready. So the first thing you do is build this foot on the bottom of the basket. And that secures all your spokes in place. So you want to take one piece of rattan and run it through each hole until you've got maybe two inches. And you want to go all the way around your base. Work fairly quickly because you don't want it to dry. You're going to do a real drastic bend so you need it to be moist. I'll even those up as I go around. I'm just trying to get everything filled quickly. Doesn't take too long. Sometimes I do this and form the foot as I go, but I think that's a little complicated to show for beginning people. It's a good idea to cover your table surface too, and I didn't think that think of that today. That one had a fat end on it. I'm gonna use it last. I'll flip it around and try the other end. As you're working, if you break a spoke, just cut the broken part off and carry on. You've got about eight inches extra length, six to eight inches. So if you break them, if they're very easy to repair, and I'll show you some of that as we get going. Most of these are going to go through really easily. Sometimes you'll get a piece of rattan that's a little more um, spongy. And so you can just cut a new piece or cut the end off and try from a different area. I'll put some extra in all of the kits so that way you don't have to worry about not having enough spokes. All right, this is just a basic foot. And what we're going to do is start anywhere around the circle that you want to start. I'm just kind of making sure I have enough length pulled through. Start at any spoke. Uh, if you're left-handed, you're going to go to the left. If you're right-handed, you'll go to the right. Whatever's comfortable for you is good. Um, we're going to come out, start anywhere, come out in front of the spoke beside it and make sure that you've got enough tail to tuck behind that third spoke. And you're just going to keep going all the way around. And see on this one, I'm too short. I just pull a little more length and go back at it. And once you place it, it's going to stay there by itself. You don't have to hold it. So I'm going to keep going around in that in front behind, in front behind, all the way around. Anytime it's too short, just push a little length through 
I just cracked that, I think. As long as it lays behind there, that third spoke, you've got enough length. For a right-handed person, I'm using my left a lot. <laughs> When you get back to the beginning, you just loosen your first spoke. And we'll be, we'll be doing that here shortly. I'm going to go pretty fast. See, I'm kind of guiding it. I'm pushing out with this finger and I'm pushing in with this finger. So you kind of guide it around that second spoke and it helps you just lay it right in place. I am missing a spoke. How did that happen? Oh well. We're going to get a spoke wet real quick, and I'm going to pretend that it's there and just keep going, and then come back and put it in. Okay, you're back at the beginning, and see, it looks like I don't have any place to lay this one, but it's going to go right behind here. I'll just lift that up a little bit, lay that second to the last one behind it, and then this one you slip in that hole so that it, I'll try it with my left hand so you can see. It's just gonna slip right in there. And then you just tighten that back down and you're good to go. Now, because I somehow misplaced the spoke, we've got this little situation back here, but I can let that ride for a little bit um, while our other spoke gets wet. I'm just gonna run it in, loosen this one, and place them just like I did at the end. We'll let that sit for a minute. I'm just gonna set it right on top and we'll come back to it. Um, while you're building your foot, you can go ahead and get some of your quarter flat wet. I'm trying not to fling water everywhere. Um, a lot of times at the dollar store, you can get those plastic um, tablecloths for parties. People use a lot of times for little kids' parties. Or you can get a plastic tablecloth with the felt backing. Those work great for keeping your surfaces covered while you're doing baskets. When you're picking up your flat, any flat, flat oval, anything where there's a, an amount of surface area, there's a smooth side and a rough side. And you can feel it with the tip of your finger, sometimes your fingernail. There'll be less um, ridges, lower ridges on the smooth side. You can bend it in half this way. You can bend it that way. Whichever side's fuzzy is the, we call it the wrong side. So you want to take the side that's smooth and keep it up. I'm gonna to try to do this with cutters just to see if it works. I've not done it before. If it doesn't, I've got scissors here. You may need to get a pair of home scissors. We're gonna cut a point on the end of this with the smooth side up, rough side down, and you're just gonna cut an angle in there. If I'm coordinated enough to do it with cutters, we'll see. It needs to be six to eight inches long, and if your first cut doesn't get you there, See, I've only got about four inches. Just go back at it, cut a little more off. It's not gonna really show much, so it doesn't have to be perfect. This is what allows us to do what's called a continuous weave, where you just have one piece. All right, that's gonna be good enough, I think. So remember, this is the smooth side, and that's what your angle's gonna look like with this being smooth and this being the rough on the back side. All right, that's ready. I'm going to check this spoke and hope it's wet enough. Yeah, I'll make that work. All right, I'm going to go put this right in here. See how I slip those in there? Just like nothing. 
not hard at all. All right, now we're ready. Well, now you know how to cut your angle. And we're going to put that back in the water because I got ahead of myself a little bit. We have three rows of twining. This is a basic twine and it's done with two weavers. Very easy. You're just over, under, over, under. And we do that for three rows first. Then that makes our wall a little more stable. So let me get those wet. You don't have to have it as wet when you're doing a twine because you're not doing these drastic um, bends. When you do the braid, we'll have to get the ends really, really wet because we're going back and forth. A um, couple of things while that's soaking. One of the things you want to watch for when you're weaving your wall is you, you don't want to move your spokes in and out this way a lot. You want to try and keep them straight up. So the, what, the way that I work that is to hold my basket this way and let the weight of the basket keep those spokes sticking out. They look a little bit angled, but as you're weaving, you're pulling them back in. So that just that little bit of an angle helps you keep your wall straight. If it flares out a little bit, that's okay. If it goes in a little bit, that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. What you want to watch for is having too much angle coming out your wall. Like you don't want your, your basket to sit this way because we don't have enough spoke to compensate for the space that gets created as that angle goes up and you'll get too much distance between your spokes. That'll make your wall weak. You don't want to do that. And you don't want to come in too tight because the side of your wall will look like that and the opening will be very small. So you want to try to stay straight, but don't stress out if it's not perfect. It'll be okay. So in your kit, you're going to have some long pieces of this. There's number three round read is what it's called. Just let your long ends fall on the floor. Start anywhere you want to around your basket. And this is the part where I tip sideways. You take one piece, put it behind one spoke, just hold it with, use your hand like a lobster claw and just hold it in place. Take the second piece, put it behind this next consecutive spoke. So they're right in a row. And once you start, you don't have to keep holding it, but at first you do. I just hold mine like that. You want to start on your left, go over a spoke and behind the next spoke. And I try to slide mine up so that I'm not pulling out on that spoke too much because I don't want it to break. And you just keep going around in front of one, behind one and out. If you notice that your spokes start to get light in color, put them in the water. You want to keep them wet so you don't break them. And it just keeps going around like that. We're going to do that for three rows. Um, I think I want to take it out and show it the left hand way because it is different. When you read patterns, they're all written for right handers. And I try to, I try to show it left as well. You're just going to start at any spoke and go this way. Just the same way. I'm just using the opposite hand. You're going to go over one, behind one, and back out so that you're basically creating a twist in between each spoke. One piece crosses over the other and you just keep going around same way as if you're right-handed, just goes the opposite direction. I'm going to put it back to the right-handed way because that's the way I weave. Behind one spoke, behind the next spoke, hold them in place, go over one, behind one, and out. I'm going to show you a technique called a step up when I come back to the beginning. We don't, for this kind of basket, we don't really have to do it, but it's a good habit to learn if you're going to keep building baskets. I don't exactly know why it happens, but if you don't do a step up when you're twining, you get a bulge at the beginning of your row and it makes your basket have a hump and I have no idea what, why. It's just the way the rattan lays. So we do a step up to avoid that. I'm kind of pulling back with these fingers to keep that straight. Your ends will get twisted up. You just kind of keep unwinding them. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing with my hand. Just sliding that along so that I'm not pulling the spoke in and out because the more you 
move them in and out, the weaker the fibers become and it makes them easier to break and harder to shape. You don't want them that flimsy. That's another way I do it. Sometimes I grab it with two fingers and you can see I'm starting to twist there. That gets a little hard and see how my spokes coming out. We don't want that. So if you start getting this twist, straighten that out. You don't want that in there. It doesn't really hurt anything. It just makes it harder to work with. You want to have this nice loose flow in your rattan pieces. I end up using the backs of my fingers quite a bit. If that doesn't work for you, I got to get these. You don't have to do it the way I'm doing it. Just as long as you're not bending those spokes around too much, then you'll be fine. All right, we're coming up on that step up. This is another way. Grab it this way. I'm trying to nurse it through there so you're not bending your spokes too much. If that works for you. All right, this is what's called a step up and this is fully described in your pattern. So you'll be able to hopefully understand how to do it. If you don't understand how to do it, my um, email and phone number are going to be on the pattern so you can contact me. When you reach the spoke before the spoke where you started, we started here and we've been picking up this weaver on our left. If you're left-handed, you've been picking up this weaver on your right. Stop at that point. Take the opposite weaver that you've been starting with. I've been going with this one. Now I start with this one and I go over one and out. Same movement, but different order. And then I pick the last one up or the one on the left and go behind one and out. That's called a step up because you started using the opposite weaver that you were starting with. When you get done, if you look, you'll see that the weavers are coming out from behind the same spokes where you started. There's a spoke lane here and there's a spoke lane here and I'm coming out from here and I'm coming out from here. If you can see how that looks, then you know you did it right. At that point, your step up is finished and you're ready for row two and you go back to lifting them up and moving them in the same order that you were doing before the step up. But I've got to get these untwisted because they're getting a little wild on me. I was in a class one time where we were doing solely round read and we had two students sitting beside each other and they got down to the end of their bases and they realized they were using the opposite end of the same pieces of round read because it's so long, it's easy to just pick up your neighbor's ends. And I always think about that when I'm doing this part. It's funny, but it had it been me, I would have been frustrated. All right, so now we're ready for round two. Same thing, over one, behind one and out. And you can see my rattan is starting to get a little bit lighter. I don't know if it shows. Um, it looks more white when it's dry and a little more like a cream color when it's wet. It gets a little darker. So here in a second, I am going to dump my spokes and my weavers in the water. Just get them a little bit wetter. And you can see, see that color. I don't know if you can see this color difference. See how the round is light? A little bit of difference. That's how you know when it's getting too dry. You can get a spritz bottle and use that if you like. I normally have one, but I didn't bring it today. So we're just gonna dip it in here. If you get these bases wet, it's okay. As long as you don't soak them, you'll be fine. A little bit of water won't hurt it. It's just plyboard. And then for my weavers, I just stick them down in there and hold them in, pull them through, and that's going to be enough water. They're not that dry. If you're working outside in the wind and the sun, you're going to have to get your spokes wet more often. They dry faster. Now we're back to the beginning. We're going to do a step up again. This is where I started, where my first spoke is laid. If you can see that. So I'm at the spoke before my beginning. I have been picking this spoke up. Now I'm gonna switch and pick this spoke up. Does this make sense? I'm gonna go in front of this spoke, behind this one and out. 
same move, but starting from the, from the right hand weaver. This makes a big space and it looks kind of odd, I know, but it works in the end. You're gonna go in front of this, behind this one, and back out. And that completes the step up for our second row. And then we're gonna continue on the third row, same way, behind one, or in front of one, behind one, and out. I don't know if I'm going too fast for you to see what I'm doing with my hands or not. I probably should slow down a little. Running that finger behind. I come behind that spoke, use my fingers to keep it separated, and just run your hand up. And that gets that spoke behind, the weaver behind there without moving your spoke too much. So I'm moving up through with my thumb. If you find an easy way to do that that's comfortable for you, then certainly do it that way. There's not really any right and wrong in basketry. You just have to do what works for your hands and the way your mind sees things. And it's just a technique that I developed as I started weaving. So you're basically moving the weaver up the spoke instead of in and out. That's another way to do it. Sometimes you grab it. Let's see that tendency. So I'm kind of sloppy doing it that way. I better stick to this. All right, we're coming to the end of our first set of twining. All right, time for the step up. Pick up the weaver on the right, over one, behind one, and out. Over one, behind one, and out. All right, and if you look, that completes three rows of twine up the wall. And we're just gonna take our cutters, get in behind there, cut those off, and let them lay. I lift it up a little bit so that I can get underneath it and just clip it off. And you wanna make sure to leave enough length that it'll stay behind those first two spokes. All right. And I always save my rattan. That's quite a bit of length. I might use it if I break a spoke. This weaver and these spokes are all made out of number three round read. So if I happen to break a spoke, I have material right here to make a new one. I'm gonna set that aside. Now, you remember we cut that angle and we did it so that this is the smooth side. Yeah. All right, so you wanna cut it where, I did that opposite, this is the smooth side, I'm sorry. And you got that nice little point. Some people clip this on this kind of basket. I don't clip it, I just hold it because by the time you get partially around your row, you're good. It's gonna stay in place. You don't really have to hold it. Start any place you want to. We're gonna do a plain weave. This is called a continuous plain weave and it works because we've got an odd number of spokes. You can go over two and under two on an odd number or you can go under one, over one. This kind of basket, over one, under one, makes a tighter wall. If you're spanning two spokes, it makes it a little looser. So um, I chose to go with plain weave instead of a twill. So we start behind any spoke, hold it in place, and just go over, under, over, under, all the way around your basket. And this is starting up your wall. Just kind of hold it in place with your fingers. And that, um, it might not look like it, but I'm pulling out with my left hand, I use it a little bit like a claw to try and hold these spokes straight. And that's sometimes when I'll do that. 
just a little bit of outward pressure is all you need to counteract the force of weaving and pulling in because when you tuck it down you kind of just naturally pull it your weaver and I think I put 10 or 11 rows of this in you can put um, fewer rows if you don't want as deep a basket if you go much more than 10 or 11 rows you, you'll start to run out of length to do your braid but you could probably add a row or two if you have enough material in your kit. See, I'm kind of doing that same motion when I was twining. The kitty's back. Hi, buddy. <laughs> like, what is that hitting my leg? <laughs> okay, I want to show you this. I'm going to back up. When you come around to the beginning, if we had an even number of spokes, I would be under here and over here and exactly the same over here. So I would be overlapping. Here I'm not. You see the beginning lays behind that spoke. When I come around to that same point with the sec starting the second row, I'm going over the spoke I started on. So that is what gives you that look of a regular over, under, over, under basket that we're all so used to seeing. It's because there's an odd number of spokes. Otherwise, I would have to overlap some, trim off the weaver, and start a second row with a separate length of weaver instead of just keeping one continuous piece going all the way around. That's why it's called continuous weave. If you have an even number of spokes and you want to do it continuous weave, you use two weavers and it's called a chase weave. We're not chasing today. I see my left hand. You get that action of my left hand pulling back. I usually get three rows or so, and then I start checking my shape because sometimes you're subconsciously you're putting pressure where you don't realize you're putting it as you're working. And so if you get uh, three or four rows in maybe you look I'll show you what I do I just hold it up and let the spokes tell me what I'm doing if I'm pulling too tight my spokes are going to be angling in if I'm pulling out they're going to be angling out so you can just let your spokes show you what you're doing see I'm back to the beginning again and I'm over under over as I go up the wall because there's an odd number of spokes As this end comes, I'm just going to let it lay there and I'll show you how to overlap, but we're going to leave it there for now. We're just going to let it sit there and I'm going to hold my basket up and let my spokes tell me. See, I'm pulling out more here than I am here. And you can kind of pull out because you're not secured over here. That's going to move a little bit. So you can loosen and shape and tuck and kind of pay attention to what you're doing and I, I know now that I'm pulling out a little here and I can correct that by putting a little more inward tension as I come back around to that spot. Overall I think it's pretty good. All right we're going to leave that little tail so that it will have some overlap space and we're going to grab another piece. This piece you don't have to taper. You taper the beginning and you taper the end. In between, while you're building your wall, if you run out, you don't have to. You don't have to taper it. You're just overlapping it. We're going to find the smooth side. And make sure that's outward toward you. And we're just going to overlap one spoke. There's my end of my other row. I'm just going to tuck like this and carry on like it was always the same piece. 
if this were a weight bearing basket, like a market basket or something you were going to put heavier items in and carry it around, you would overlap four. Um, but this kind of basket one is fine. We're not really, drill through bases aren't really made for weight bearing tasks. So it just needs to be enough to be secured. Here comes the cat looking for his rattan piece. I should have given her a piece, let her play with it. I think I've got my rough side out, but this is one of those pieces where I was talking about it's all, it's natural. Parts of it are smooth on one side and parts of it are smooth on another side. So I'm just gonna let it be and let that texture be on the outside and not worry about it. If that happens with you and you have the wrong side out, feel free to flip it over. It doesn't, it's just gonna put a texture on the outside of your basket. Turn it over, that's called reverse weaving. <laughs> I think knitters call it frogging when they pull out their knitting. I'm gonna slow that because I just realized something I'm doing. With these three fingers, I'm pulling out. And then with that finger, I'm directing the rattan behind there. So I'm actually shaping with both hands. See when I pulled up on that to get that smoothly behind that next spoke. The spoke's going in a little bit and a little bit crooked. So I want to try to pull back on that, straighten it up a little bit. I think the kitty wants to be a basket maker. All right, I'm gonna check my shape after this row and I'll use that as a point. Okay. Mostly it's going straight up. I think I'll leave it. All right, see on this piece, I don't have much of an overlap. Like we did on the other one, it was coming out till about the center. This is not really enough because when you're braiding, if you pull that spoke sideways, it's gonna come on, it's gonna come out from there. So we're gonna come back. I think I'll go come back to here and cut that, cut that off so that we're ending on an overstroke and giving ourselves a little more length just to make a better overlap. And then we're going to grab another piece of rattan and do the same overlap we did before. This is actually a piece I meant to start with, but that's okay. Just because it's longer. All right. See how you can really bend that. That's how you know it's, it's good to use. All right, smooth side up. We're gonna come in for the overlap. Just quarter inch to half inch is fine. That's actually kind of a long overlap. I'm gonna, I like to try to make them not so obvious, but with this kind of weave, they're gonna show to some extent. Just hold that in place and carry on. I like to do this kind of basket. They weave pretty quick and you don't need the same amount of tools as if you're doing a woven base. You don't have to have a scraper 
You don't have to have an awl. It's easy enough. You can tuck it with your fingers and your hands become your basic tool. You just need something to cut and measure. And sometimes, don't tell Martha Stewart, but I uh, guess. I just go, eh, that looks good, and I cut it off. No precision. Okay, I'm going to pull out this one part of my wall I've noticed for some reason I'm putting more tension. So I'm pushing in with my thumb and pulling out on my wall. See that little difference? So that as I lay that weaver, it's not pulling my spokes in as far. Most of the time, if you catch something like that soon enough, you can correct it without having to take your whole basket apart. I'm going to run out of material here in a second. I'm going to have to grab some more. And I think just to do a couple more rows of wall, I'm going to go ahead and put round read for this twill and let that be soaking while we finish up the wall. Okay, see that tight spot I'm starting to pull in right there? I don't know if you notice it, but my wall is starting to go in at that point. I think I'm just going to leave it because it's not going to be that noticeable. You know, I think my spokes are a little bit shorter than 22 inches. I could. I'm looking for my beginning. When you're doing a continuous weave where we cut that angle, that area is right here. When we come around and we end our basket, we have to cut an angle to match that angle and it's going to run right along the under edge of our very last row. So what I'm doing now is thinking about, I reused some spokes and I didn't measure them and mine are getting kind of short. And if you can look at the difference in the depth of this basket. If I continue weaving up to here, I'm going to have this much for my braid and that's what I'm paying attention to. I want to make sure that I don't go so high. You won't have to worry about that because you'll have a kit that's already set, but um, I reused spokes and cut some length off. So I have to think about that as I finish this basket. But I think I should be able, if I can't get the same braid I put in your kit, I'll just make a braid up as I go and show you how to do it. You don't have to do yours exactly like mine. I'll get that wet. I'm gonna go over here and grab some more quarter flat. I didn't put quite enough in there. Uh, rattan is very unruly. You'd like this, these are freshly opened coils. They come in one pound coils most of the time. Sometimes you can get a half pound. Um, it's very wild to store. So if you wanna get into basketry, Make sure that you have storage space because rattan is wild. Sometimes it comes 380 inches a piece. Like one length of this can run up to 300 inches long. And you have to store that once you open it. <laughs> that cat's sticking his... <laughs> He's just determined. All right, we're starting with an overlap. And I decided to just go ahead and make it the same height so I've got maybe two or three rows left. Starting with that overlap because I ran out of material. Whoop. I don't know if you caught that, but I just bent that spoke a little much. So I created a bit of a kink right there. So now when I come back around to that spoke, I'm gonna have to be careful because if you do that more than two or three times, you're gonna break that spoke. I feel like maybe I'll break one anyway just to show you how to repair it in case you do that. I'll break one when I get done on purpose and then I'll fix it. What I'm doing in my mind, I'm thinking about ending this portion 
and going back to the twine and what I'm doing is watching for my beginning where I, we cut that angle so that when I come back around to it I can gauge where I want to cut the ending angle. Okay, it's right, right here is where my angle started. So we're gonna go to this point. All right, we started here with our beginning angle. You can barely see that little tip behind there. We're going to eyeball out and see that our angle went to about this spoke. So what I do is take my the weaver I'm working with and stretch it out to that spoke. But we need to end under the next spoke because you can't end on top. It won't hold. You'll have a piece sticking off. So we're going to end behind this spoke. I just go ahead at this point. I give myself a little play, a little extra length, and cut that off. And just set that aside. Now, I am looking at the angle, and it needs to be cut. Yeah, it's long, that's good. So my angle needs to be cut on this bottom edge, the bottom edge of this weaver, and it needs to basically match the beginning of this weaver. So we're going to pull some out so we've got some to work with. you got all this loose tail. Flip it over because you need to cut this edge you need to, so that when you lay it back, your angle is on the bottom edge. I don't know if that's actually a rule. I just happen to not like the rough edge of the angle showing. It makes a smoother basket if you don't see that. So I gauge where my first angle started. Just guessing, doesn't have to be precise. Turn it over so that I can have access to this bottom edge. And then I'm gonna cut close to an identical angle. I just lost my place when I moved my thumb, but that's okay. I couldn't hold it. See how this is just real short? Just go back at it. And what I usually do is get my first guess, or my first, you know, they're educated guesses, of course. And then come back and look. I've got a little too much, um, I don't know what you call that, a chunk. It's not a smooth transition. So I'm going to go back and trim that off, but here's my starting point. So I'm just about, I'm just about there. And I'm just going to clean that edge up because I don't like it. It's not quite an angle. It's kind of a, looks like a mouse took a bite out of it. There, that's all better. All right. Now we're just going to go over, under, over, under. When we get to that last spoke, I might take some length off. Remember, we left some play. Yeah. I'm just going to snip that off. So it's still going to be behind that spoke. All right. That's basically your, your wall. We're going to do this twine next, and it's the exact same twine as this. The plain over, under, over, under, all the way around. I hope I had three pieces in here. So if I run out. Whoops. Flicking water all over you. I never promised to be neat. All right. I like to uh, stop and start in different places. So I stopped here. I'm gonna rotate around a little bit and start my weave in a different place. 
it's kind of like when you lay flooring, you don't want your seam all in the same place. If you put your stop starts all in the same place, it makes a visual line and your eye will be drawn to that line. So people don't really see the whole basket. They just keep their eye gets stuck. All right. Remember behind one, behind the next one, place just like you did in the beginning. I hold them in place like a lobster claw with my hand over one behind one and out. And we're going to do the step up here as well. Really, if you're not twining five rows or more, that, that step up doesn't really matter. So if, it, if it's hard for you to do it, skip it. I just like to teach it so that you know what it is when you see it in patterns. If you're going to keep weaving, it's a really good habit to just do it. That way you won't forget to do it when you need to. One spoke is a little spongy. Sometimes you'll have a different texture. Like I've got this one spoke. It's a little fatter and a little softer than some of my other spokes. I try to keep them fairly even. You know, like if I come across a section that's too spongy, I just won't use that section. But for this kind of basket, it'll, it'll be all right. I'm running my thumb between them and flipping it with my hand to untwist them. All right, we're back to the beginning. We're going to do the step up. We can stay untwisted. Turn that around so you can see what my hands are doing a little more. Whoop, did I pass my beginning? No. I do that sometimes. I get on a roll and I'll realize I passed up my point I needed to stop at. And I had to back up. So sometimes I'll put a little, I have some little tiny brass clamps or I'll cut the end at an angle or tie it in a knot, put a rubber band on it. You can mark with a clothespin um, if you want something to make that first spoke stand out. I get kind of caught in the rhythm of what I'm doing sometimes. I forget. All right, I'm gonna do the last step up and complete that third row and then I've gotta get these spokes really wet. I am noticing that because, <laughs> because I reuse the spokes, I'm going to have to change my braid. The directions for that braid are written out fully in your pattern. I'm going to do the same steps, just fewer times. That way you'll, you'll see how to do it all. You'll just do it one extra row. All right, step up. I pulled in a little too much on at my beginning and end, but that's all right. All right, I did the step up at the end of row three. We're going to clip those off so that they lay behind the first two spokes where we started. And voila, there's your wall. So I take, at this point, the end of your cutters will work probably, just like this. I go around and kind of straighten my spokes up, just push them over a little bit with the end. You can use an, whatever you get, your fingers the end of your cutters. Just kind of pushing it so they're not slanted. See like that's slanted. I pull it back. 
just kind of make sure they're all going straight-ish. They're going to move a little bit when you braid, so don't stress too much about getting them exact. I usually just go for the ones that are wildly slanted so they're not obvious. All right, we're going to get these really wet, but first I think I'll cut one just in case you break a spoke so, so you can see what to do. Just say that you're weaving around. Let me get this long one because I know I've got plenty of space with it. Say you're weaving around, weaving around, and you snap a spoke. I'm going to cut it because I can't snap it. Let's say that sucker just broke right off. All you have to do is come in beside that spoke with a new piece and just run it right down beside it. And twine is really nice for this because it hides a lot. You can just run it right in there. When, by the time you put your braid in, no one's going to see that. Nobody's going to notice it. Just cut it, clip it off neat. Run your other spoke. Even if it breaks down here, just go ahead and run your spoke down beside it. If the look of it really bothers you, you can actually take a spoke out from underneath, cut a whole new spoke, run it down through there, and place it back in place. Usually, if I'm going to do that, I run my whole spoke down. I don't I don't take it out, the, the one that broke. I leave it in there as a guide. Shove a new spoke in there, pull the old one out, and then you have to fish around a little bit, but you can run it through the hole in the bottom of your base and just put it right back where, like it was always there. All right, I'm gonna get these really, really wet. Just bend them down. Push down on your basket a little bit and just hold it there so they get real wet. Okay. This is a warm water bath because we're using, we're using natural rattan. There's no dye in it, no color. So um, it's not gonna bleed like if it was dyed. You can get rattan in any color you can think of or you can make it, you can dye it yourself with, um, there's basket dyes, writ dyes. You can make your own colors up and just soak your rattan before you use it. But if you do that, it's going to bleed a little. Um, color is always going to bleed and it's also always going to fade. All right, those are pretty wet. This is a basic um, over one, behind one, just a basic braid. And I'm going to do as much of it as I can, um, and then I'll just end it because my spokes are a little shorter than the ones in your kit. You can start any place you want to, and you're just going to bend a spoke. I'll do it reverse. You're going to go behind one and out, and then leave it. A lot of people have a tendency to want to keep going with the, the spoke they just placed. You're simply going behind one, out, leave it. Then go get the next spoke and go behind one, out, leave it. And you just go all the way around behind one and out. And once you go out, leave it sticking off your basket. You're done with it for now. And just keep going. See how they're just sticking out? That's what you want. When you get done, you don't have to hold them. The, the last one locks the whole row in place. Sometimes real young kids will call it in front behind instead of over and out or behind and out. If it, that helps you Keep your pattern in your mind. Sometimes that helps. All right, I need to come around this way because I can't watch my shaping. But I wanted you to see the motion. I 
by the time you get to the braid, your shaping's basically set, but you can pull in too hard or not hard enough. I'm trying to just think straight up. All right, now we're back to the beginning and you see we don't have a spoke sticking straight up. So we look to see where we started and that's right here. That's the first one where we went over and out. Loosen that up and in your mind, just imagine that it's going straight up and you're going behind it and out. So you stick it through that loop so that it runs behind and then you just tuck that first one back in. And at that point, I just go around and kind of even things up and make sure all my rows are down tight, nice and neat, or as neat as I want them to be. If you don't want yours to be neat, that's fine. Okay, you ready for the second step? This is kind of a um, little bit harder to, to envision. Start anywhere, and you're going to come under the next two consecutive spokes, and you're going to run the end of that spoke in the space where that second spoke comes out. See, I'm going underneath the next two spokes and I'm running the end in where the second spoke came out. On this part of the braid, I leave the first one loose because if, as you keep doing rows, it gets harder to identify your beginning. So I leave mine loose like that. And then your next one, you have two more spokes. You're gonna go under those two and go in where that spoke came out. And you just keep going around under two and in where that second one came out. You can go under one and in if you want to. You just stick it in there. So when you're done with this portion, all of your spokes will be sticking to the inside of your basket. If these are really long, which some, sometimes I do baskets where they're really long, it's very easy to grab them back and, and start working with the wrong spoke. So I try to keep good habits of keeping them out of my way so I don't accidentally grab the wrong one. Some braids can be a challenge to fix. Now when I get this done, I'm gonna go back around the whole rim and make sure it's all tucked in nice and neat before I start the next part, which is basically a repeat of the first part. Okay, so we're back to the beginning. I'm gonna loosen the second one as well. So in your mind, think about what you're doing. You're going under two and in. So this is your first spoke that you started with. So here's one spoke, two spokes. So this is your second one. And you're gonna come around and go in that hole like that. And then this is your first and your second. And you're gonna come in where that second one comes out. Just run it right in there. Tighten up your first two. And I just kinda use my thumb and index. Run around the whole edge. Just kinda tucking in making sure they're all pushed up tight. I think I'm gonna give it a little dip, get it wet. Just for a little bit, it's, it's pretty damp. All right. And again, you start anywhere you want to. I kinda, tr I think in my mind, I'm going behind two and out. That involves three spokes, the two you're going behind and the one you're working with. So I keep three in my hand at a time, just because I'm moving one, 
behind two and that puts all of the spokes I need for that step in my hand. So I'm going to go behind two and bring it to the out of my outside of my basket. And then I'm going to pick up that next spoke in a row and go behind those two and out. So I always have two consecutive spokes in my hand. And then I pick that third one up and move the first one I had. Does that make sense? Behind two and out, behind two and out, all the way around. And whatever helps you remember that pattern. Sometimes people tip them on their side and look in them that way. For this, this braid, I've done it enough that I'm good this way. I'll probably get out of stroke just because I said that. We'll see. And I'm kind of pushing down with my middle finger on my left hand. If you are left-handed, you would be doing the exact same thing, just going the opposite direction. I think in our pattern, we did this three times. I think I'm only gonna do it twice because some of my spokes, because I reused them, are a little short. And I'd rather be able to show you all the steps without running out of spoke. I checked on this one because that felt like a really big space and I wanted to make sure I wasn't skipping a spoke. Um, it's helpful for me to make sure, see I did miss one right here. See how he's sticking out? I did miss him. So we just back up, get that in there. Either missed it or dropped it. The ones on the inside, I think down. So I keep them facing down the bottom of the basket. And the ones that come out, I just make sure there's an end sticking out. That way I can keep, create a visual and a mind pattern, a pattern in my mind, so I don't skip things or lose track. All right, it's like we're back to the beginning. You just find the first ones you placed, back them up a little bit. You create that loop to your first two. You just push it backwards. It'll flow naturally and start making a loop. Loosen them up. Remember, we're going behind two and out. So this is one, and this is my next one. I'm going to come up through that loop. Under this one, under this one, and out. And then this one is going to go under this one under this one and out through that hole, through this space. And that locks everything in place. Okay, see some of mine are getting pretty short, so I'm not gonna do another row of that. You'll have length in your kits and directions in your pattern so that you can put three around there. I'm going to go over to an N and then do the last step. Start anywhere. Go over to and it's going to go down toward the bottom of your basket. Over to an N. In where that second spoke comes out. I'm going to leave my first two a little bit loose. And tighten them up in the end. That way I can identify my beginning. And I pull them out a little so you can see that space where that's coming out. It helps you identify where to put that. So I'm just going over two and in. You can think over two and down if that makes more sense. I tend to do that. Because you're basically at this point, you're on the inside of your basket. You're going down. Done, you can go back and tighten it up, pull on the ends, make it a little neater if you want. I 
Okay, we're back to the beginning where I left these two loosened. This is one, this is two. We're gonna go in front of these two. I'm going right where this spoke is coming out. And then we're gonna go in front of this one, in front of this one, down where that second one is coming out. Now push it right in there. And then just tighten those first two up and you're done. All right, I'm pulling like that to just get everything down in there tight. All right, and I'm gonna tip my basket on its side so you can see this. Um, on, the, on the pattern what you guys will have, you'll do that st whole step one more time because that way you'll have three rows, but I don't have enough spoke to do that, so I'm gonna end mine. And basically you're just going over two and down. This last step is over two and down and that's it. So I'll try and do it this way. I don't know the best angle for you to see. We're gonna go pick up three spokes and you're gonna go over two and down and then pick up the next spoke and go over two and down. And you're just gonna keep doing that all the way around. Can you move it? Over two and down. See how short my spokes got? Over two and down. Trying to keep my hands out of the way. This is the way you end a lot of braids with this kind of basket. That over two and down just kind of gives it a finish and a space to hide your ends when you clip them off. This one I'm doing by feel. I normally would tip it up on its edge so I can see it but it's not complicated, so I'm able to feel what I'm doing. Just over two and down. And when you lift up that next one, it locks the previous piece in place. So the whole braid stays together because of this step. It gives it a nice finish. And that's a long, wild one. That's about how much space you'll have left. So you have a nice amount to work with and hold on to. I'm just looking for my beginning. You can see when you get to this one, you have over two and down, but then you don't have any more spokes left. So you have to figure out where your beginning was. I'll find it and then show you. See how short it is, but it's there. This is my first one that I placed. I'm going to push that back. I move it so I can identify it and then I want that second one as well so I'm gonna go over wow the short I think I grabbed it. I missed one it's this one shoo I missed one okay so I've loosened my first two and I'm gonna go over this one over this one and down over this one and over this one and down so you're just kind of tucking them in those little spaces you create. It gets hard to do if you got your spokes too short like I did. All right. Some of mine are actually so short that I won't have to trim them off. But like this wild guy, just come in there with your cutters. Pull it out a little bit and snip that end off so it doesn't show. Sometimes... Um, it's better when you get super short. I'm trying to show you one of mine, like this one is like barely an inch long. It's not much to work with. So I'm gonna let that dry that way and then go back and clip it off. But all you have to do is lift them out a little bit. Snip it off a little bit, it's done. 
and then you just let it dry and you're finished. Not have one end so short where I don't have to trim them all. It's kind of handy. So that was a happy accident. And then you're done. If you want, at that point, you can spray paint them. You can use wood stain, men wax, um, cabot, whatever you find, whatever you like. Some people make walnut baths. That's a little complicated for me, but it is beautiful. Um, and just get a brush and paint them. Spray paint, brush paint, wood stain. You can make a dye bath. Throw them in there if you want to and dye the wood as well. And you're done.